Hi everyone, welcome back to Ivan's Stock Talks. And today I want to talk about something very important that I have noticed of people that have been buying like individual stocks or dividend ETFs because they just pay a dividend. I get the logic behind it that they want like income, like they don't want stocks like such as Amazon or Google or Tesla or other companies that do not pay a dividend. They say, I have read this online, that they'd rather have a company pay them because it's an immediate return on their shares, meaning they're getting paid to hold the company's share. To me, this is a big, big mistake. And I wrote down several reasons. There's more, but I came up with seven reasons. The nine in a particular order. Number one, buying with sentiment when you invest your hard earned money i like to call it you cannot buy assets with your feelings that's a big big mistake you cannot buy a company go 100 percent into this company with your feelings because you don't know what's going to be the outcome of this company for example i like apple look how apple is doing right now terrible right but i could have chosen nvidia and i missed it but i like apple and coca-cola if i go to a deli or to a convenience store and they don't have coca-cola in it they have a like pepsi even though i have nothing against pepsi but if they don't have pepsi with coca-cola in there i get upset i get upset because i want my diet coke okay i want i want my coke zero right i want it when i get to buy it so that's my point you cannot buy it with your sentiment because you did not know what's gonna happen with that company okay that's that was number one number two you think you're going to outperform the market this could have been a number one issue but this is a big big deal thinking that you're going to outperform the market we have stories yes we have stories that people have won the lottery are you going to be able to win the lottery or even that person will be able to win the lottery every single time they play the answer is no clearly no because the person bought a company however amounts of shares they got lucky or you know it was their destination or their yeah destination or their destined right <laughs> um so this is not edited this is going straight the way it is so you're not gonna win the lottery every time so don't you ever think that you're going to outperform the mark, which is the total return. You most likely underperform even by 1%. And I'm going to give you an example. What's 1% of a million? That's $10,000. That's a lot of money. Maybe not to you, but it's a lot of money. Okay. You will beating the total return. It's very difficult because you don't know which company is going to up, outperform. And when you invest in an individual stock, you are trying to outperform the market. So you try to outperform the market and then one day sell it and brag about it, right? Three, dividends are not the all be all. I repeat, dividends are not the all be all because when a company makes a profit, I'd rather them reinvest that money in the company in my company that i i've been buying shares off i want that company to grow get a market share all that good stuff that makes the stock appreciate in price and value which is better dividend hinders that i think i think dividends is the achilles heel because i rather even though coca-cola has been paying like dividends for years now and increasing their dividends i know that the company has grown so much but i'd rather them even buy back shares which gives me a bigger you know ownership on the company i think that's better a bigger ownership let's say i own five percent and let's say they buy billions of dollars throughout the years in shares like shares right back so your five percent might grow to like six percent or seven percent Oh, eight percent of the company's ownership. I think that's beautiful. I like ownership instead of just receiving a dividend, like here, or you know, holding down the shares and not selling the shares. Like I said, dividends are not the all be all.
this one goes back to number two, uh, you know, about you're not going to outperform the market, but the total return. When you put your money in the S&P 500, you get the most beautiful total return. You are going to take advantage of what happens in the market. You don't have to compete with any other company. You buy them all, and over the years, you get an average. And that average, it's very, very powerful because by getting the, the best return, you are making the, the most profit out of the situation. The total return is a must. Don't just rely on dividends as a total return, even though the S&P 500 pays a dividend. The S&P 500 pays the best kind of dividend because you have all these companies in there. If they pay a dividend, I receive it. I don't have to care how the company is doing. It's the best dividend you can get from the stock market. Five, dividends are not promised. And you know that. Read the fine print and 100% dividends are not promised. This is a big deal for a lot of people. People may say, if this company cuts its dividend, I'm going to sell it off. I don't want it. And you see that a company might be paying dividends throughout the years, but the share price goes down. So the share going down and the dividend doesn't add up. Even though you get to buy more share along the way, it's a vicious cycle. And I don't like vicious cycles. I want my, even though that it pays a dividend, I want share appreciation, right? Like that upward trend, not like this. And then like, oh, you pay a dividend, I'm gonna invest it, but the, the next year, the next day, the stock price just keeps diluting or, you know, disappearing. Dividends are not promised. They can be cut at any moment. And not every year a company's going to increase the same amount of dividends. You know that. A lot of things can happen along the way, you know, like another something crazy in the world. So sad to say so, but dividends are not promised. Number six, leaving money on the table. When you don't get the overall total return, you are essentially leaving money on the table. And in the stock market, it's, it's all about nicks and dimes. You are leaving money on the table. Because even a one percentage difference is a big, big deal. Again, if you have a million, one percent is 10K. Two million, it's 20K. Three million, it's 30K. It's a lot of money. Don't leave money on the table. Take it. It's yours. You decide to risk your money into the stock market. So get the best return possible. Don't leave money on the table you know, to the Coca-Cola industry or to Pepsi or to Pfizer and, you know, to all these companies. Do not leave money on the table. Take it for them because it's your money. You earned it because you're putting the 100% capital. Take your money back. Don't leave money on the table. Seven, seven, you are doing a disservice. Seven and the final one. This is very important too. You are doing a disservice to your financial freedom because if you're not getting the total return, you are doing the service to your free financial freedom. That's 100% how I look at it. I'm going to give you an example. It's not going to be just me talking off my mouth. If you invested a million dollars in SPLG and SHD, a million dollars each, total return would have been. On SPLG, five million two hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars. SCHD outcome, four point five million dollars, which is not bad. SPLG pays paid you as of twenty twenty-three sixty-nine thousand dollars just in dividend alone. SHD pay you one hundred and forty-four thousand dollars, which is on paper way way better. Hey, SPLG pay you sixty-nine, and SHD is paying me. 144,000 right not too shabby but remember SPLG total return over SHD that's reinvesting back the dividends into the fund the difference is $740,000 that's that's 
SQLG total return over SCHD. And even though SCHD year per year is paying you more than twice as much as SQLG dividends. You see my point? The total return, the total return is the best return. This is my unpopular dividend opinion. Uh, this is Ivan's Stock Talks. Thank you for watching. If you have subscribed, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? So if you have subscribed, please do. Don't forget to comment, like or dislike. And I see you in the next Ivan's Stock Talks video upload. Thank you so much.